In today's video, you'll see an island that was uninhabited from inception until 1810. You'll also see a perfect spot to aid your scientific research, and lastly, we featured a once bustling mine site that is gradually losing its steam. Mikingo Island Lake Victoria is home to various species of fish and wildlife. The lake is located in one of the most isolated communities on Earth, the Magingo Island. Of the about 500 people who live there, they're mostly fishermen. Not only is it impossible to access the island without a boat, but it's also perfect for filming a documentary on Fisherman's Slum. It wasn't always disorganized as it is today, though. Sometime in 1991, two Kenyan fishermen claimed to be the first men to discover and settle on the site. At the time, the area was infested with weeds with no infrastructure. Years later, another man claimed to be the first inhabitant. This man and many others have migrated to this island over the years as it has enough fish to provide income for the fishermen. Early inhabitants built makeshift houses comprising scavenged and recycled materials, and there's a hair salon, brothels, wine bars, and a tiny port on this island. Tristan de Cunha Triste de Cunha is officially named the most remote inhabited area in the world. It's located 1750 miles away from the nearest land in South Africa. The major island is 7 miles across and about 38 square miles in all. It boasts about 300 inhabitants, and the area was discovered by Portuguese explorer Tristão de Cunha in 1506. However, it was uninhabited for many decades until American Jonathan Lambert decided to move there in 1810. After declaring the island was his, he died two years later. Eventually, the ownership of the island was transferred to the United Kingdom. Most of its citizens live in the settlement of Edinburgh at the Seven Seas, where they either farm for work or for the local government. The settlement itself generates income from the sale of stamps and coins from the British Postal Code. What's even more fascinating about this place is that healthcare is free, but medical emergencies are handled in Cape Town, South Africa. St. Helena St. Helena is a neighboring city with Tristan de Cunha and Ascension Island. It is 1,510 and 810 miles apart and is dominated by a 2,684-foot mountain that is also used as a national park. Only about 4,000 people reside here, with most of them being British colonists. Locals earn a living here by exporting goods like prickly pears and coffee, while the rest that is not business-inclined work for the government. For more than 500 years, the only way to reach this island was by sea. However, the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 changed the course of transportation. The most magnificent house on the island is the Governor's, which represents the elegance of 18th century England. You'll find two tortoises here, and one is said to be the oldest vertebrate in the world. The official language spoken in St. Helena is English, but it's spoken with a very strong accent. Easter Island Easter Island is famous for its unique and iconic statues, plus it's one of the most remote communities in the entire world. It's over 1,200 miles away from the closest inhabited island and 2,180 miles from Chile, the nearest largest landmass. It has at least 4,000 residents, and the first set of inhabitants on this island is said to be Polynesians, who were experts at traveling far distances in open-decked canoes. Today, locals make a living catering for people who visit the area to explore nature, culture, and the history of the place. Even though Easter Island was covered with palm trees for over 30,000 years, it's currently treeless. Studies show that the trees disappeared between 1200 and 1650 years ago. Rats did play a crucial role in deforestation, more than likely by chewing on the roots of said trees. Diseases like smallpox and tuberculosis were introduced by the Europeans and killed several islanders in the 1800s. McMurdo Station, Antarctica The McMurdo Station in Antarctica is a research facility that is run by the government through the National Science Foundation. The base was built in 1902, but operations began in 1956. Today, there's about 1,300 residents, even though the number keeps declining due to the cold. Residents are forced to grapple with the average summer daily temperatures that can drop below zero. Of all the things residents are hoping would improve, they're grateful for internet access. During the summer months, the station welcomes over a thousand visitors comprising scientists from the public and private sectors. Grocers also procure food for the residents while construction workers and carpenters maintain the place. Individuals that call this place home for most of the year enjoy the unusual weather that comes with their decision. Utkijevik, Alaska Utkijevik is located in the northernmost city of America. Formerly called Barrow in Alaska, this town lies below the Arctic Circle and it's a remote and cold place. Even though the weather is extreme, researchers say people once thrived in the region hundreds of years ago. The area was explored in the 1800s by Frederick Beachy and named after Sir John Barrow, the promoter of Arctic explorations. 
The city is built on the permafrost up to 400 meters deep. It's really only warm for about three months in a year, while the cold season with an average temperature of minus 16 degrees lasts for about 4.4 months. Aside from the extreme temperatures, inhabitants have to endure polar nights when the sun sets in the day and does not rise again until after 65 days. Despite the oddities, the polar survivors have great qualities of life and enjoy modernity to its fullest. They also enjoy clean water and sewer systems, plus churches, schools, etc. They also communicate with the outside world thanks to the internet, cable, phone, and other modern facilities. Feel free to visit this isolated community to see things for yourself. They're pretty friendly. La Rinconada, Peru La Rinconada is situated in the Peruvian Andes, about 64 kilometers north of Lake Titicaca. Aside from its remoteness, it's the highest human inhabited area in the world. It's also built at a height of over 4,900 meters and lies at the top of Mount Anania, which explains why it experiences sub-zero temperatures for most of the year. Due to the remote altitude, visitors experience the effects of extreme altitude sickness with symptoms like headaches, shortness of breath, nausea, and even death in some cases. Today, the area is home to over 50,000 people. Beyond the freezing temps and the isolated locale, there is no basic infrastructure or sanitation system, and people bury their trash outside. Better still, they leave the trash where it falls and allows nature to take its course. People who live and work around them have to grapple with treacherous conditions like traveling on the only major road in the city filled with dirt and ice for most of the year. One wonders why people live there despite being shut out of the world. The town did once boom between 2001 and 2009 because it had sufficient gold. Since then, though, relocating from the place has become a big deal for early dwellers. Ito Kortomit, Greenland. Probably butchered that sentence there. Ito Kortomit? Ito Kortomit. Ito Kortomit? Ito Ito Kortomit. Got it. Almost. You might think me mispronouncing this might be kind of difficult to actually do, but this is a difficult word. But you know what's even five times harder? Living there. Formerly called Scores Beyond, this area is known as the remotest inhabited area in the Western Hemisphere. The over 400 residents of the area live between Northeast Greenland National Park, the largest national park and fjord on Earth. The seas around the town are frozen for nine months of the year, shutting out visitors and locals alike. However, you can reach the town during the freezing months by hiking on a snowmobile. If there is an emergency, you're advised to leave the town immediately with a helicopter that lands to rescue people. If you're lucky to have an emergency during warmer months, you can use a boat. The remote town has limited resources, but with the help of countries like Denmark, they can get electricity. There's also a small hospital run by a Danish doctor and a nurse. Santa Cruz del Isolet The tiny island of Santa Cruz del Isolet is off the Colombian coast. It's located in the Caribbean Sea, and studies say that it is the most populated island on the planet, with over 1,200 people living on a small island that is about the size of two football fields. Until 150 years ago, the area was deserted until a fisherman found it. He used the area as shelter during the storm, and seeing that the place wasn't bad after all, decided to start a family there. His descendants still live there and have since multiplied over the years. There's no roads here, but there is a school that caters to children up to 10th grade. Their major source of water comes from rainfall, and there's plenty of seafood for inhabitants to eat. There's also no police, since there's really no crime. When there are problems, the community works together to solve them. Cooper Petty, Australia Australia's outback is one of the most hostile places on the planet. It boasts of scorching temperatures and numerous wild animals that are ready to kill and maim you. While it does look like one of the most unlikely places for humans to live, people still call the place home. In 1915, a teenager discovered a gemstone there. As a result, many miners embarked on an expedition to discover gold. They were fortunate to strike an opal fortune, and today about 70% of the world's opal production happens in this location. It's now named the opal capital of the world. While miners were desperate to mine, they wished they could escape the torturous heat underground. Therefore, they made the area their home. It's often cold during the day and warm at night. Today, Cooper Petty has over 2,500 permanent residents that live underground, and they have all the basic services ranging from medical facilities, water, education, electricity, etc., etc. Even though the town makes so much from opal mining, tourism brings much more income. See you all next time!